Now you just saw the demo of the application. By seeing the demo, you can imagine a few states in the application. Sometimes the application was just presenting the current time to the user. That I will call it as a ticking mode or a ticking state of the project. And uh, the user can also do a clock setting. That's why we can introduce uh, one more state called clock setting. And uh, the user can also do alarm setting. That's why we can introduce uh, one more state that is alarm setting. You can imagine uh, such states or you can write it down on the paper before you modeling through the software. So let the ticking state be our uh, initial state. Whenever you give power to the application, our application will be in ticking mode showing the time, current time to the user. When the application is in ticking mode, if user press the button set, let's say, then the application's state changes to clock setting because the user wants to do clock setting. And whenever the application is in ticking mode, if user presses the button OK, then the application's state changes to alarm setting. That's why when the mode is ticking, user can press this button to enter to the clock setting mode or the user can press this button to enter the alarm set mode. It's like that. So that's why there are two events. The set and OK events or signals are processed like that when the application is in ticking mode. When the application is in clock setting or in alarm setting mode, the user can abort the setting at any time. That's why we can also give one transition from setting modes to the ticking mode. Instead of you know drawing individual abort like this, you can just draw a super state for these two states and you can give one common transition from setting state to ticking state. So that's actually the abort. And also we can give one more transition from here to here if a user is done with the setting then the user can come back to the ticking mode so the only difference between this one and this one is here the setting is approved that is the setting is saved here it is not saved it is aborted after that we can create one more super state for all these uh, states let's call it as a super state clock and we can introduce one more event or signal called alarm which takes us to the alarm notify state because alarm can happen at any place it can happen here it can happen while you are doing the clock setting or it can happen while you are doing alarm setting instead of giving three transitions from here 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 you can create one super state called clock and then you can just give one common transition from here to here that is for alarm signal when the application is in alarm notification state it can show the alarm notification to the user you just saw that in the demo and whenever user presses the button ok the alarm notification ends and the application now goes back to the history of this clock state because when alarm took place the user uh, might be doing some clock setting or alarm setting or something that's why it makes sense to come back to the history state i hope that makes sense and inside the clock setting we have to draw some more uh, substates to configure the hour information minutes information seconds information and other things which we'll see later this is just a zoomed out picture of our whole state machine so our main application structure we have to create one main application structure for which we are drawing the state machine and this main application structure is obviously derived from QHSM because this is actually a hierarchical state machine. That's why we will derive our structure from QHSM and uh, let's introduce a couple of uh, attributes to the main application structure. Let's say the current time attribute which is used to hold the current time that is the real time 
so this variable is actually updated by the timer isr for every 100 milliseconds let's say we have to implement one uh, timer isr which you'll see later the state machine never updates this variable this is only updated by the timer isr so there will be one more variable called temporary time this is used to hold the setting time while you are doing some settings so that settings information will be stored in the temporary time temporary time will be copied to the current time only during approval that is when you say okay otherwise it is not copied like that alarm time holds the user's alarm information and there will be one more variable called alarm status which holds whether the alarm is on or off that is active or deactivated state and also user can select a uh, different time modes like the time can be represented to the user in 24 hour format or 12 hour format that information that the user selection is stored in time mode variable and there could be some other variables or other attributes we may be using while drawing the state machine so we'll see that later if you want more attributes then we will keep adding those attributes to this structure currently i can think of only these attributes so signals as you saw in the previous picture of a state machine these are the signals i'm going to use set okay about alarm and there will be one a tick event which is sent to the state machine for every 25 milliseconds this tick event we can use to update the display or if you want to blink some warning messages error messages alarm notification messages so we can make use of the tick which is uh, posted to the state machine for every 25 milliseconds now before going to the next lecture so to do for this lecture you have to create a new project 007 clock alarm in vs code and copy paste the lcd.c and lcd.h files attached with this lecture in vs code project folder src 